My name is Veronique, a mother of two girls and a boy. I am 35 years of age, and I'm from Canada. One faithful day, in the last weeks of September, just when the summer season was over, a brush with death was my experience after I purchased an injectable weight loss product, which I ordered online. Swept into the allure of quick results and the convenience of skipping diet and exercise, I was unaware that I was putting my life on the line. This incident starkly underscores the dangers of unregulated online medication purchases and the critical importance of consulting healthcare professionals before using any substance intended for body modification or to cure any diseases or sickness. I had previously tried the weight loss injection two years earlier during the COVID-19 pandemic. The quarantine had led to me putting on weight and in my desperation for a quick fix, I turned to this product. In August 2023, I decided to give it another try, purchasing it easily online. However, this attempt at weight loss turned into a nightmare when, after administering the injection, I began to feel unwell and fainted. My husband and my father-in-law rushed me to the hospital with the ambulance. It was a very critical situation, so I was taken to the emergency ward. Once in the hospital, after many hours of examinations, the shocking truth was revealed by the doctors to my family. The doctors told my husband that I consumed one particular medicine that has brought this dangerous situation. According to the doctors, the product I had consumed was a dose of pure insulin. This led to a severe drop in my blood sugar levels, putting my life in grave danger. I remained unconscious for 18 hours until medical experts were able to revive me. The incident served as a chilling reminder of the potential death trap that unregulated online weight loss products can be. In that period of unconsciousness, I found myself in a strange world, a different realm which I saw some humans which are not like the humans we have on Earth. I saw that everybody was so busy moving up and down, I saw them very busy, but I didn't see what actually made them busy, just busy for nothing. I was alone standing under one most beautiful tree which I have never seen before on Earth. Suddenly, one strange tall man appeared right in front of me. He was very handsome, wear a white jeans and a cream t-shirt. He asked me to follow him, which I did. Whilst we were going, I saw that the road which we took was very narrow, but as we walked, it will be expanding. He asked me to hurry up so he can show me something because I have few time to spend here and I have to go back to where I came from. Suddenly, we appeared on a huge mountaintop where he asked to look down. I did and saw many nations fighting each other, destroying each other's flag. But it was not clear to me what was happening, so I asked him what was going on. And he told me that is going to end the world. War. He told me, look, I turned to my left side and I many Asian flags on fire and many armor cars blasting these Asian countries. Suddenly I saw many blood flowing. I started crying and asking why. Why are people dying like that? He gently touched me and said, it's over. Then I saw 2024 written on a white stone lying beside me and I picked that stone up in my hand. Then he asked to go back for my time is up. He said, you need to go back. Your families are worried and they need you. Suddenly my eyes just opened and I found myself on a hospital bed with my families around me. My families were so happy to me back to life, but I was so sad and worried about what I saw and what is coming in the year ahead. I am not a Christian. I don't go to church, but I ask everyone who hear my testimony to repent and start a new life for what is ahead of us. Coming is very dangerous for humanity. This harrowing incident serves as a dire warning about what is going to happen and then also the risks associated with weight loss products sold online. Health authorities are urging the public not to gamble with their health for miraculous solutions that can prove fatal. The case of Veronique is a stark reminder that when it comes to health, though this happened on purpose for her to be shown what is ahead of us in the coming year. I also advise that professional advice should always be sought and shortcuts often lead to dangerous dead ends. I am Laura Smith. I am a very calm and peaceful woman who loves life and a very noble Christian. I don't joke with my prayers and Bible reading each night. I have a very close personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I have a sharp intellect that helps me respond to situations deftly. Somewhere in the middle of February, I was admitted at the hospital in Zuckerberg San Francisco General Hospital and Trauma Center in the US. I was diagnosed with sepsis and I underwent emergency surgery. My body suffered septic shock and started to shut down. I went into cardiac arrest and was placed into an induced coma. 
During this time in hospital, tragically, according to the doctors who were in charge of my situation, I died. In the afterlife, I communicated with Jesus Christ. I experienced heaven and met the Antichrist. When I died, I was immediately taken to heaven and I saw Jesus Christ. In the realm of communication, a profound connection existed beyond the confines of words. Our exchange transcended linguistic boundaries, relying solely on the unspoken language of understanding. Jesus knew what I was thinking and feeling. My arthritis pain disappeared, which had bothered me on earth, and I felt light, having a sense of self, whilst being completely connected to Jesus. Jesus was happy I was in heaven. He said to me, you leave all your earthly baggage behind you, and you step out of time as we know it. And I said I wanted to be here, and experienced an enormous sense of peace. Everything is a part of everything in heaven as angels and Jesus Christ, and you all seem to be connected through a sound that you can hear in the background. I saw colors that surpass what we words for on earth, and everything have had almost a flowery scent. I compares the love I felt for my surrounding to what I feel when I get married or have children. I misses this feeling now that I am back in this earthly realm. I long for the day I go back. When I was with Jesus Christ in heaven, he told me to look to my right. I looked, and I saw golden balls of light dancing in front of me. One of them moved towards me, and I felt my mother's presence, who had also died of sepsis when I was a child. I was extremely excited to be reunited with my mother, who I saw just exactly as she looked in my favorite picture of mine, taken when I was happy and healthy. I was devastated when Jesus explained it wasn't my time yet, and I cannot stay. Before I came back to life, Jesus said he needed to show me some things first. He insisted on people knowing that what he wants is a personal relationship with everyone. According to John chapter 20 verse 23, it says, If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. There is forgiveness that comes through believing the gospel, and the gospel goes into the world through the preaching of others. Jesus knows your deepest secrets anyway, and will forgive you. He wants you to come to him as you are. Jesus showed me the spirit of what is called the Antichrist. The Antichrist is a term used for anything that goes against what Jesus wants, that being a personal relationship with everyone. Surprisingly, the Antichrist appeared as a being and had a similar glow to him as the others I had encountered in heaven. Yet he was different, I can tell you. He is evil. He had a smirk on his face and his long white hair and appearance saying, somewhat bizarrely, he looked like the mean dad from Harry Potter, I mean that smug, arrogant air. The Antichrist was breathing out notes of music, a bit like the exhalation of a smoker. As this stream fell towards Earth, it became a sidewalk that evil spirits started to use to walk towards our planet. I then witnessed churches pop up of all different kinds, and I understood that the Antichrist was convincing schools of faith that you have to do certain things and behave a certain way to earn your entry to heaven. And this has made many Christians to create many different churches with different doctrines and teachings in their churches, which has brought a lot of confusions among these Christians. Why are there so many churches with so many different doctrines? Didn't Jesus say that he would build his one true church? Is there such a thing as the universal church? There are an estimated 37 million churches in the world, with 50,000 new ones added every year, and not even two are the same. These are all the works of the Antichrist. Jesus wants all of us to be one just as he and the Father are one. I clearly understood that this breaks Jesus' heart, because it is not the truth. Jesus died for us all, and loves us unconditionally. Before I came back to life, I was surrounded by a city of gold, and I had a last dance with Jesus. He told me it was time to go back, despite my refusal, and he repeatedly spoke words to me that I didn't understand. When back on earth I researched it, and discovered what he had been telling me, amazing beginnings. I am just one of several stories told by people who suffered cardiac arrest and lived to tell the tale. This doctor, for example, studied over 5,000 near-death experiences and concluded that there's certainly an afterlife. Death is a murky topic and one that we all spend more time than we'd like thinking about. Many wonder whether there's an afterlife or whether your life really does flash before your eyes when you are dying. If you die naturally, the process actually starts around two weeks before you take your last breath. Some unfortunately die young, and a very small group pass to the other side, and then come back again. These people are then able to share their stories about what they experienced in the other realm. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, 
and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so. And then also, don't forget to share your own experiences in the comments section below. Until next time, stay connected and see you in our next video. God bless you.